again when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me. My soul cries out. Hallelujah. Amen. We truly thank Elder and our musicians for that lovely selection. We're up to the most important part of any apostolic service, and that is the preaching and the teaching of the word. And that would be coming from no other than our own pastor, Elder William E. Smith. But before he come, let us greet him and the choir both by saying, praise the Lord. God is worthy this morning. And this little anthem we want to sing right here is the one that I want you to stand. Let's give God the praise on. For he alone is worthy. Come on, help me say it. For he alone. enthusiasm and get your mind off of other things and just say, for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, for he alone is worthy, for he Somebody hand said, Let's glorify the Lord. Let's glorify Him. Glorify the Lord. The bread is holy. The drum that sounds and the bell ring begin to be my Come on.
him in the beauty of holiness. Amen. We can worship him and we can praise him in the beauty of the Holy Ghost. Come, let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Amen. He is worthy to be praised. And we just thank God for this opportunity to come. Amen. Uh, here, the second to the last Sunday in the new, in the old year, rather, excuse me. And we praise God for him blessing us to be here. It is no goodness of our own, but it is the goodness of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And we come to celebrate today. Amen. I'm not going to hold my head down. I'm not going to try to deal with stuff in biblically and non-biblically. But every day we praise God. Every Sunday morning we come before him. And today uh, we want to deal with this subject from the reason why he came. Why did Jesus come? Let the church say amen. If you would put up on the screen our text today and just focus on the 20th verse. Oh, yeah, let's give me the 11th verse. I think it's for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I believe this morning it is very imperative that Jesus come to the earth. I say it today, it is imperative that Jesus comes to the earth. And Jesus, you may be seated. Uh, Jesus comes to the earth for the purposes of, of fulfilling his father's plan. Man was in sin. He was in need of a savior. Why God went to Bethlehem and why he chose uh, Mary and why he chose Joseph, the, 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 um, the wise men and the shepherds in the field, but as I begin to really study this thing, God wanted to make a noise. Amen. Hello, somebody. God wanted the world to know I'm here Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. And he did it in spectacular, spectacular form. Yes, sir. He told me, he said, listen, there's a child going to be born. And his son's name is going to be Jesus. He shall save you from your sins. Amen. Amen. Several reasons I want to talk about this morning. First is that the reason, one of the reasons he came was to first of all to be our intercessor. Yes, In the book of Isaiah chapter 59 and verse 16 and he said, he, and he saw there was no man and wondered that there was no intercessor. Right. Therefore his arm brought salvation unto him. And his righteousness, it sustained him. Jesus is the only one who can truly intercede on our behalf. Amen. Amen. So if you want to get happy about something, thank God he is an intercessor. The, the, the book uh, uh, Webster tells us that an intercessor is one who goes between or intercedes or acts as a mediator between two parties. One who interposes between two parties. And being there, he comes and he comes between the two parties and to reconcile the two parties back together. Amen. Amen. And it also says it's one who pleads on the behalf of another. So he's talking about two things here. He, he comes between to bring folk together, and then he goes before the judge and pleads our case. Uh -huh. Amen. And I believe in this verse that Isaiah is telling us what God has said. God looked and found no man to retrieve or to make man's situation right again. The Bible says he looked in the heavens and he looked in the earth. He looked under the earth, but he could not find not one to come and down the cross for our sins. But Jesus said, and his word today, and God said, I'll do a new thing. I will wrap my spirit in flesh, and I will come, and I will die for the sins of mankind. And you know what really amazes me all that God went through? All he went through to bring Jesus to us. Hello. 
he, 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 man, he, God was something. And he is something. He gave man in the very beginning a free will. Now, if you don't want to re- celebrate the Lord today, that's your will. But I'm going to celebrate it because he's done so much for me. When I look back over my life and I see where I've been, what I have to come through, I don't just sit out and not give God the glory. Amen. God is real. And whatever the world is doing, we want to focus attention on why he came. Amen. We don't get hung up on a whole lot of stuff because it really doesn't make any difference anymore. Amen. We got to understand that Jesus came to give us life and life everlasting. You can choose to accept Jesus or you can choose not to accept him. Or you can choose to obey him or you can choose to reject him. The choice is yours. And Jesus is not only our intercessor that comes between us. He's also our remedy. John 3, 16 tells us, in 14, he said, As Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. Come on, let's lift him up. This week, every day, lift Jesus up. That men in in the world can see Jesus through who? Through us. He said, lift him he lifted him up in the wilderness as a serpent. Even must the Son of Man in today's time be lifted up. And that whosoever believing in him, amen, should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his what? Only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in him, amen. And the key thing here, you must believe in him. Amen. You will happen to have not perish, but you will have everlasting life. And verse 17 puts a cap on it. He said, for God sent not only his son into the world to condemn the world, but he, through him, the world might be saved. When Jesus come, he upset the religious world. He changed things around. But not only did he change things around, he came to set things in order. But he also came, amen, to save our souls. Can you thank him this morning? And the reason he came was that mankind was sick. Just like those who were bitten by snakes in the wilderness who got sick and died. But when they pulled up the serpent on the the rod and they looked upon it, as long as the man of God had his hand up, the children of Israel prevailed. The song said, lift him up. Amen. High. Lift him up. As long as we got Jesus up, amen. We are, we, are, we are safe. We are safe. Look at Whatever you do, take the Lord with you everywhere you go. Amen. Amen. When you're going into the house tonight, today, take him with you in Jesus' name. You must, Jesus is our remedy. Now, there are some diseases there is no cure. They say cancer does not have a cure. They can do remedies to kind of help you make it through. But there is no known, amen, uh, remedy for cancer. But sin was greater than cancer. Amen. But God got a remedy for sin. Amen. His blood. Somebody say his blood this morning. He has remedy for his sin. And unless we get that remedy, amen, to make us better, amen, we will die spiritually. But I think you get a to- dose of Jesus this morning, amen, he'll make you feel better. Amen. Once you call his name real quick and feel better. Amen. No matter how things are looking right now, if you just call his name, you will feel better. Amen. Why don't you try him one more time? Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Jesus is our remedy. You know, God wants us to live. Hello, somebody. I mean, you know, he wants us to enjoy the things of life, the blessings he brought, but he wants you to live eternally. This is the reason he came. He says, I come that you might have life. And life more abundant. And that life more abundant is after death. So when you die, your physical life, amen, cease to exist. But he's talking about that life everlasting. Amen. Where you're going to walk the streets of gold. Amen. You'll never get tired praising the Lord. Amen. They won't ring the bell on you to stop. Can I get a witness? Don't you want to go to that place where they said that there will not no need for lights, but Jesus Christ himself. Amen. We'll be the one that liked the city. 
can't you imagine all day long, all night long, and there would be so it would be so endless you won't even know day from night, because the Bible said there will be no night there. And to be in the presence of the Lord, I tell you, that's a wonderful thing to do. It's better than going home this afternoon. To be in the presence of the Lord all, all day and no night. And this is why Jesus came to give us life, amen, from our sins, to, 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 to cleanse us from our sins. Jesus is that remedy this morning. As Moses lifted up the serpent and the rod, so must we lift up that rod and serpent so men and women can be healed. Amen. Men and women can be saved. There are people out there dying from sin. Amen. And though we have, we, have, we have taken on Jesus by his gospel, we cannot sit back idly by and just allow people to die in sin. Amen. Now, one of the things I want to help us with, don't go out there and grab them by the throat and say, if you don't get saved, you're going to hell. But show them the love of Jesus. Sometimes we scare people off. And I, I don't think, that's not, a, that is not a, a, a criticism, that's just an observation. When somebody is hurting, they don't really need to tell them you, you sick. They need to hear from you, there's a better way. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. I want the doctor, to don't come in and tell me I got a, I got a bad tooth. Fix it, doctor. Amen. Don't tell me what kind of drugs you're going to go. Fix my tooth so I can get back to eating. And we as the people of God need to be just like a good doctor out there. Show the world how Jesus has changed your life, how Jesus has changed my life. And the best, the best salesman you can be of Jesus is show the world, first of all, Jesus said, God so loved the world. And we need to love the world in the sense of that we are, we are willing to share with them the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. They don't need who shot John. They don't need how bad you having it. They don't need to know that your foot hurts sometimes. But they, they need to know that I was lost in sin. Amen. Amen. I was shaping in iniquity. Yes. And Jesus came down and he, I heard his word and I've been healed ever since. And guess what? I'm continuously getting healed. Amen. And healing is not just not feeling the pain anymore. But healing is that sin that was on us one time. Amen. God delivered. Aren't you glad? Aren't you glad God just came? Aren't you glad that God didn't, God didn't crucify us before he was able to help us? Amen. So today we must understand too that the very object that brought the sickness, the death upon the Israelites, is the same thing that brought salvation. God saw salvation. Man had sinned. God gave Adam a power of choice. And that's why today you can't make people do nothing. They got to want to see you do it right. Amen. Amen. We don't need to be talking to man. You need to come on and try to twist somebody's arm. They may take their arm out and hit you back. But you show them the love of Jesus. Amen. You show them the love of Jesus in your life. Yeah. How you was nasty one time. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Why? Every other word was that kind of word. Yes, sir. But God. Somebody say, but God. But God. But God. He brought you through. Can I, can I go back just a minute? Right. Amen. I got a good deacon. He's not here anymore. But from what I hear, that in the town that he lived, when you walk down the street on the sidewalk, you move to the other side. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You didn't mess with this particular deacon. Amen. On Friday, you didn't do nothing to do with it. But one day, he heard the gospel message. Amen. Say to repent and be baptized in water in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the Bible said you were filled with the Holy Ghost. And why people go through one step, two step, three step treatments. Amen. God in one treatment. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. One touch of his blood. Amen. He never looked back at that stuff. Can you give God the praise this morning? Thank you, Jesus. And that's why I rejoice. I saw it with my own eyes. I didn't always understand it, but I saw how God took a man from here in the depths of sin picked him up, washed him in his blood, filled him with the gift of the Holy Ghost, and was faithful. Faithful. Even when he didn't feel good, he was still faithful. He loaded up people in, the, in his car and almost in the trunk. And his wife was sitting up front, the queen bee, laying back there in the car. 
Thank you, Jesus. God brought them together. God made their relationship better. Come on, I know what I'm talking about. I saw it for myself. I saw how God, amen, took a took interceded between two and came back. And I tell you, in their later years, you never saw a loving couple. And his phrase was, if you live right, hallelujah, if you live right, heaven will belong to you. And this, this happened here in Progressive Church, Denmark. Jesus came and he blessed this man, blessed this woman. He was able to share this gospel message to all of his children, all of his grandchildren, all of the great grandchildren, and some of them children are still in the church today. Don't you tell me God can't do it. Won't he do it? Oh, I give, oh, hallelujah, I give you thanks this morning. God has given us examples right here among us to show us that he's a good God. And there's nothing too hard. Tell somebody, there's nothing, nothing too hard for God. This deacon, like myself and all of us, we were all had all sinned. We all had come short of the glory of God. This tells us that no one is exempt. Every single one of us here this morning was born in sin. We were shaping in iniquity. Amen. 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 Because of the sin of Adam, we were all thrust in sin. But God came. Amen. And God looked beyond my fault. Amen. He don't tolerate the sin, but he looked about that fault. And he said, I'm, I love you enough to give myself for you. And those of you who have, have tasted of the Lord, just, just thank him. You've tasted of him. Amen. How about y'all there in the back seat written on how much more time I got? Amen. Come on, hold your head up. How many of you have had tasted of the Lord? And can you tell me he's good? Have you tasted? The Bible says, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. Amen. The reason that Jesus came into the world is found in Romans 5 and, 20, 5 and 12 when he said, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into the world, and death by sin. And so death was passed upon all men, for that all had sinned. But I thank God for Jesus. Jesus loves us. God loves us. Just as we read in John 3, Jesus wants to live, wants us to live. Listen, 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 listen. Jesus came so you can live. In this world, you can live free from sin. And also, you can, you stay with him, you can live everlasting. Amen. Life everlasting. So now we see Jesus as an intercessor, and he is our remedy. He is our remedy of our sin. Now, he is our nourishment. John 6 and 35 tells us, and Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life. He that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. As I, as I begin to research this thing, we are not only physical beings, but we are spiritual beings. Amen. Now, just as our physical body needs a good breakfast in the morning, yes. a nice lunch at dinner, at, at what we call, I didn't know that down here when I came here that dinner means lunchtime. That's a, that's, that's a regional thing. That, that's happened down there in Mount Pleasant? Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. I'm in the right part. Where you going? 12 o'clock, I'm going to dinner. Y'all know what I'm talking about. We didn't say lunch. Now, now, wait a minute. Hold up. Ease up. None of y'all was born in sin. That's right. Now, once again, you remember they used to say that? Yeah. Amen. Back right here in Denmark, the, the, the meal, the meal at 12 o'clock, well, ooh, and so it's not time to go to dinner. But look, we are, just like our spiritual being, our natural being, we need a good nourishment. We need a good diet of some vegetables. Amen. A lady passed away who worked at the Brown Derby in Orangeburg. And she was a member of uh, Refuge Temple over there in Orangeburg. And when you walk in, she would take your order. I'm trying to lighten them up a little bit here. <laughs> and you come in, I want some, I want some um, macaroni and cheese. And I want some 
fried chicken dark meat. And the next burger I had him like, well, what, is your ve- what, what are your vegetables? <laughs> you, you can get three vegetables. <laughs> so I would get the vegetables. <laughs> Amen. Thank you. Just like your body needs nourishment, your spirit man Amen. needs to be nourished every day. Amen. They say Amen. the most important meal in the morning is what? So as a spiritual being, your morning regiment should be, first of all, Lord, I thank you. Amen. I thank you for carrying me through the night. Yes, Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I, I was asleep the other night, and my wife was just a coughing. It looked like she just wasn't going to get no breakthrough. She was just coughing. And as I, later on in the day, I thought about it. I said, Lord, you're good. I said, you could've, she could have just died there coughing. When I got up the next morning, I got in the bathroom, I looked in the mirror, I said, Lord, you are a good God. Amen. See, when you get up in the morning, your regiment ought to be, first of all, thanks. Amen. The first, the first, before you even brush your teeth, look in the mirror and say, Lord, I, I'm thankful I can see my reflection this morning. Can I get a witness here this morning? Amen. And the next part of it is to find your Bible somewhere and just read a little bit of that good word. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you just need a good dose of word in the morning. Your breakfast and your coffee might go down a little bit. So we need, amen, nourishment. Lastly, Jesus came to nourish us. He says, I am the bread of life. He that comes to me shall never hunger, and he that believeth on me shall never thirst. Amen. Amen. Jesus is the only source of our nourishment today. And just as we try to keep this old natural body going, this coming year, let's keep that spirit man strong. We're going through the, the period of consecration. It's a time to break this body down and bring it into subjection so God can use it the way he wants. Not the way we want it to be used, but how he wants to use it. And when we come off that sacrifice, we will have developed a habit. When that spirit man is getting low, we are nowhere to go to get some help. Can I get a witness? And I just want to encourage all of you. I know we have many of you who have different concerns and needs and, and, and physical needs and that kind of thing. But find something you can fast for. Amen. You know, put down the put down put down the electrical device or the, the iPad or the computer, something Amen. to make that make you force yourself to pick up some word. Amen. Can I get a witness? Amen. Well, it's easy to just put, put it on my iPad, yeah, that's good, but, you know, save them minutes. Amen. Amen. And get up the real Bible. Amen. And just take a dose of it every day. And you're fasting while you're going through the day. Just pick up and say, the angel said unto her, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also the holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Amen. Amen. I get you, I get you kind of kind of stirred up in the morning. Amen. What Jesus was telling Mary here in the, in the first book of this chapter, he's saying that I'm going to do something I've never done before. So I'm saying here in, in, as, as I come down is that we need a source of nourishment. Jesus is that source. Amen. Now if you will get me my last couple of scriptures here. Jesus is the only source of truth. Amen. You know, we hear this phrase, Fake news. Have y'all heard that expression? Yes. The devil sometimes try to bring fake gospel. Yes. Saying to you, uh, you just live like you want to and do what you do. God understands. Yes. God just wants you to love everybody. He just wants you to be nice to everybody. He just wants you just to be great with everybody. And you're going to great, get great things too. But Jesus said here, in the sixth chapter of John, Verse 67. Then Jesus said unto the twelve, You will also go away. Then Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. Amen. Where are you going to get this kind of joy and love but through Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. And we believe. And are sure, this is Peter talking, and we believe and are sure that thou art the Christ, 
the son of the living God. It is interest, it's an interesting thing here about truth. So give me just a couple more minutes. Is that there can only be but one truth. Amen. It can be your truth, my truth, my neighbor down the street truth. But let me say there's only, when it comes to God, there is only one truth. Amen. Amen. The facts are clear. In our text this morning, in verse 11, he says, he says in verse 11, let's put that up on the screen real quick. He says, thank you, Siri. Okay. <laughs> For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. That's true. It may not be December 25th. It could be October 31st. I ain't gonna argue about it. But Jesus was born. Hello? Jesus was born, y'all. We couldn't be having this good time this morning if we had bypassed Bethlehem. I thank God for the I thank God for the cross. And, and there's our symbol. That's yes, it is. But this child had to be born. God, and see, this is the thing I, as I begin to look at it. God took painstaking time to ensure yeah. that this thing would be done right. Amen. He says, I looked in the heavens, in the heavens, in the earth, couldn't find nobody. But Jesus says he came. Yes, yes. The interesting fact here is that, that Jesus is our Savior. John 14, 6 and 7. And I'll leave this with you this morning. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, verse 7, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Amen. Amen. They were wondering where, 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 when the fathers come. Jesus says, I'm here. Excuse me, that's a bad word. I'm here. I'm here. You see me. And I'm about to go to the cross. You're going to see something even greater. You're going to see something that has never happened. Amen. For a man to die and to be raised again. Amen. Not to die no more. Now, Lazarus was born. Mm -hmm. He died. God raised him up. But what happened? He died, he died again. again. Amen. He did something spectacular. Today, the exact accordance that the which has been and is ever for. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if you choose to get the real truth instead of this fake news, you're going to find that Jesus is the source of all that we have. St. John 8, chapter 31. Then said Jesus to those Jews who believed on him. Listen, and I say to those of you here at Progressive Word. If you believe on him, continue in his word. Then ye are my disciples indeed. And ye shall know the truth. Yeah. And the truth Hallelujah. shall make you free. You, now that you're in the light, stay in the light. Right? No more darkness, no more light. Let's do a little bit of that. Amen. I'm in the light. No more. How many of you know you're in the light this morning? Amen. Amen. How many of you know that you know why Christ came this morning? You know the fact that now that you're saved, you got to continue in him. Amen. Amen. Y'all move like y'all want to go home. Amen. Y'all just dragging up here like, amen. Uh, let's try A flat. I'm in the light for oh, no more. Oh, I am. Thank God.
thank God. Praise the Lord. Oh, I'm in the light. Help me say it. Samson, I'm in the light. 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 In the light. I'm in the light. If you want to be saved this morning, you need to repent of your sins and be baptized in water in Jesus' name for the remission of your sins. And the promise is you shall receive the Holy Ghost. And this is the reason for the season that Jesus came and died for our sin. And he offered us a way out of sin. And if you're in the light, let's worship him for a few more minutes. Oh, I'm in the light. Come on, help me say, I'm in the light. somebody and tell them you love them because you might not see them. Yeah. Yeah. So, friend.
pray for Elder Young. Uh, uh, that's a pretty good tough one right there. But we know God is able. So during this period of time, we got a lot to keep us busy. And I mean talking about praying busy here. Praying for all of our saints everywhere. Amen. All our hearts and minds are clear. Stand if you're able. Jesus, Lord Jesus, come here today this week to walk, walk by faith, not by sight. Not by sight. In, Jesus name. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. 